So it'll take a long time for you guys to get this very complex movie a green light on it. Uh, I heard it was a, a long time in the making. I wondered how long that was. Epic, the long. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, we probably could have made several films in the time period that we waited to get the financing together. Yeah, the making of the movie is, uh, is not as interesting as the actual making of the making of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's a lot of Chinese money in the movie that there, you know, the, there was an embargo at the time uh, of U.S. dollars leaving China, and there was oh. some because very the interesting stories. Because of the U.S. dollars. All and that stuff that I don't understand. Yeah, mm -hmm. you and me. Both. But <laughs> they basically said, oh, by the way, no money can come out of China, so they're trying to smuggle the money out of China. Oh, God. And we're like, the process of putting we have to know this. <laughs> yeah. I'm really fascinated by how you guys did this, how you, how you uh, wrote it, because it just seems so difficult to pull all this together. And, and you, I mean, you, you were working with a very difficult book, but you brought a very unique perspective to it. Oh, thanks. Was, was one of you like the, like the, 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 the taskmaster? Like, uh, or how did, how did you collaborate? Um, well, we, uh, it's sort of this uh, 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 mythic journey through to where we took a working vacation we'd always heard about you know writers getting together and you know uh, like Chinatown the way Chinatown was made and we and wanted to hotel room Polanski and town like slitting each other's throats and <laughs> we wanted to slit it, each other's like, <laughs> it didn't come to that <laughs> no no, it was we, we did the we romantic version of that. That's <laughs> right. You know what happens to nosy writers? They lose their nose. <laughs> That's yeah. right, exactly. Uh, so we all went to Costa Rica, and you know we uh, went into the uh, went into it sort of eyes wide open in terms of number one, could we work together, mm -hmm. and uh, number two, could the book even be made into a, a script? And because it started as this. Um, we wanted to spend more time with each other. We had become friends, but it's so hard to... Just the story. Yeah. Mm. As Thank you. directors, you never get to hang out with other directors. Uh. It's, it's almost impossible. And we went so far as to actually come to Berlin to shoot some films there, produce a few films there, and every time we came, he left. And because I was filming <laughs> elsewhere, and then my shooting usually always started when we they We started arrived. to take it personally. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? And then, uh, and then we were just you like... I told you he doesn't like us. <laughs> and then we, were, um, we decided the only way we could hang out was to work together. So initially we had this idea that Annie and I would write the script and then, you know, tell him to direct it. And we were kind of like, oh, that, yeah, that sounds like a fairy tale. Yeah, that's really nice. And uh, kind of like we did with James McTeague, another good friend. And then um, I was reading this book, and I just had this idea, or I gave him the book, and he loved the book. And then we're like, oh my god, read this book, see what you think. And it was in English at that time, and Tom got to the pigeon section of the book, and it was so hard. Or I couldn't read it. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, uh, at least two of, two of the stories in the book touch on Orwellian themes that, that you've obviously uh, um, been in trance with before in V for Vendetta and, and The Matrix. Uh, was was that the attraction, or was you know were the more lighthearted aspects of it? Well, the book what became so attracted why we threw it to him and we all sat around and waited while the German translation was finished. <laughs> <laughs> it took like months. We're all like. Every like six weeks, he'd call the translator. What are you doing? Box now. Gib Kumi. And then uh, he finished, and then he read it, and he like went on holiday with his wife, and he was supposed to having this supposed to have this romantic, lovely time, but he just sat there reading the book. And then uh, he <clears> called me. It was I was in San Francisco, and he was in the middle of the night for me, and he was like, ah, I just finished. <laughs> Uh, and then um, he, because it was this uh, narrative that offered all of this different aesthetic exploration and different styles and different themes that we've all been attracted to, it seemed like something that we could actually maybe all of us direct together. Yeah, write and direct and do everything together. Do it like a, a you know, that the, the, the energy of the three minds would really help actually get the multifacetedness of it uh, become alive. 
and not so much divide jobs up again and do stuff like that, but just say like, okay, let's try and do be always together on this, always. Yeah. Which we did, we were always together. Like, there's not a single cut that has been made on this film that we haven't been in the room together for. I There's not a single word that has been written for the script that we haven't been sitting yeah. next to each other with. And, and you're also you talking to each other. One film? That's pretty good. Yeah. Can you think of one film that three directors cut every frame? <clears throat> I mean, we, we actually said this to the DGA in this room, and they were like, well, <laughs> how can three directors direct? I was like, which <laughs> of you three directors think that you could actually make a movie together? <laughs> <laughs> Silent. <laughs> <laughs> During all this process, just up until the point that you started shooting, was there that one moment where you knew that it would work? Because, you know, having to have the book translated and it's so complex, <clears throat> and even when you write the script, even if you did get, once you get the script done, you could still go, this is too complicated, it will never, it will never fly. Was there that moment where you said, you know what, this actually will work? There's, I think what um, Andy was telling about this trip that we did to Costa Rica and where we felt like, okay, we need to find out whether there is a possibility here. It, it, was the, it was the breakthrough voyage. It didn't really mean that the script will end up being great, but we, we, we felt like we found a conclusion to how to even get in there by actually uh, a certain process of deconstruction. We deconstructed the script in terms of a way which you usually do anyways when you try to adapt a novel. You find, you know, you can't just film the novel. Right. You look for the stuff that you have uh, an affection for. And in particular on this one, it was really good that we all like, oh, I like this. We knew we couldn't be putting the entire novel into a movie. So we put it all on cards. How do you call them again? Mm -hmm. I always forget. Index cards. Index cards. I don't want to forget this one and spread them across the floor and it grew, it became this kind of huge pile and <laughs> island of things we loved about the, fil uh, about the book. But um, then, yeah, then we started dividing them up and it was this kind of process that so much clarified to us what uh, there were moments where our brains just ached, where <laughs> your brain just hurt. It was like some horrible higher level algebra class and you're just like staring. You like know that these things somehow fit together, but you can't quite see it, and you were just like. But the thing that, of course, when you read the novel, which is much more segmented, you know, it's like mm -hmm. sixty pages, another sixty pages, another. Thing, it's really much bigger chunks. The more we realized when we looked at the details, how you know some of them actually answered questions of the other story. That sometimes stories didn't need to tell another part of the story because it was told in the previous one. Mm -hmm. We realized, oh, so what? would happen if you just cut that right after each other and so it got much more complex in the structure that is much more like little chunks that can you know work with each other other than the novel which was really nice to discover that there would be an a, a, you know an aesthetic narrative that has its own cinematic flow and that is you know not just the novel's concept taken to a movie. Mm -hmm. that, I think that was a breakthrough discovery in general and the second one, I guess, that came about in the last days there that we more and more clearly tried to um, uh, connect um, uh, characters mm -hmm. and suddenly mm -hmm. discovered this idea that the, what if uh, it's the same actor? You know, mm -hmm. this whole idea, what if that is the same actor? Because he's actually doing a similar thing here, but he's a little better there. <laughs> So this is, isn't that sort of the same soul or so? What is that connection between those birthmarks? Like a match shot. And yeah. then suddenly, yeah. uh, what, is it? what if it's, what if it's,